Okay, in section 3.2, we're going to look at polynomial division, the division algorithm, remainder theorem, factor theorem, and synthetic division. Here we go. Uh, let's talk about long division first. Uh, is 8 a factor of 54? Well, it's going to be a factor if when you use long division it goes in evenly, right? Well, it doesn't. When you divide 8 into 54, I think you get 6 with the, six with the remainder of 6. So the answer is no. You could always, you could um, definitely say that when you divide 54 by 8, you get 6 plus 6 over 8. Uh, how about this? Is 14 a factor of 42? Well, when you divide 14 by, when you divide 42 by 14, uh, by the way, 42 could be called the dividend, this is called the divisor, this is called the quotient, this is called the remainder. Remember all that stuff? It turns out it goes in evenly, so in this case the answer is yes, it's a factor. When you divide 42 by 14, you get 3 with no remainder. So something's a factor if the remainder is 0. Make sense? With polynomials, it works the same. Uh, this is the divisor, so it goes on the outside. And this is the uh, dividend, it goes on the ins ins inside. We ask ourselves, what do you multiply x by to get x squared? The answer is x. So when you multiply each of these by x, you should have gotten x squared plus 4. Now when you subtract, those cancel, you get x minus 12. What do you multiply um, x by to get x? The answer is plus 1. Multiply each of them by 1, you get this. When you subtract, you, you get negative 16. So the answer is no, it's not a factor. But you could say this. When you divide this polynomial by this one, you get a quotient of x plus 1 plus the remainder divided by the divisor, right? Just like we were done before, same idea. We'll try this one. See if you can do this one. You use long division to see if this is a, if this um, polynomial is a factor of this one. Okay, when you do that, you would start off like this. What do you multiply x by to get 2x squared? The answer is 2x. You multiply each one by 2x, you should have gotten this. When you subtract, the x squares cancel. I get negative 13x plus 39. What do you multiply x by to get negative 13x? The answer is negative 13. So when you multiply both of these by negative 13, you should have gotten this. It turns out everything cancels. So yes, it's a factor. In fact, you, you could say that when you divide this polynomial by this one, you just get 2x minus 13. Uh, let's do one more. This one, um, this one you got to watch it. Uh, you may have some missing um, terms. It, a good idea would be to leave placeholders there, right? Remember that? Uh, anyway, so we'd set it up like this. What do you multiply x squared by to get x to the fourth? The answer is x squared. You'd multiply each of these by x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 1 is x squared. When you subtract, you should have gotten um, uh, negative x squared minus 5x minus 6. How do you know when to stop? Well, you stop when the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor, right? So since it's since at this point you can keep on going, right? What do you multiply x squared by to get negative x squared? The answer is negative 1. Multiply both of them by negative 1, you get this. Now when you subtract the x squares cancel, you just get negative 5x minus 5. What do you multiply x squared by to get negative 5x? The answer is nothing. You're done because the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. That's how you know when you're done. So anyway, the answer is no. But you, but you could say, however, that when you divide this polynomial by this one, you get a quotient of x squared minus 1 plus the remainder divided by the divisor. Anyway, that's, that's demonstrating what's called the division algorithm. That's all, that's all it is. It says that when you divide one polynomial by another, you get a quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor. It's really important to realize the degree of the remainder will always be less than the degree of the divisor. Why? Well, like we said, if it's not, you keep on going, right? You, uh, you, uh, you keep on going until, until, um, until you can't do it anymore. That's all this says. Uh, it's sometimes more helpful to multiply both sides by d of x, and so the division algorithm could also be written like, like this. Uh, in particular, what if the divisor is a linear factor, x minus c? Then since the degree of the remainder has to be less than a linear factor, that says the remainder has to be a constant, right? r of x would just be a zero degree or a constant. So the division algorithm says this. When you, when, when you divide by a linear factor, any times you divide a polynomial by a linear factor, 
you get a quotient polynomial plus a number. A constant will be left. It's not that in, incredible, actually. But you, you should also realize this. What does P of C equal? Plugging in C makes this term equal to zero. So P of C is just R. And that is exactly what the remainder theorem says. It says when you divide a polynomial by a lin linear factor, the remainder, R, is just a function value. That can be very helpful, especially on like a quiz or something, when you get something like this. What if you wanted to find the remainder when, when you um, divide this horrible polynomial by x plus 1? Well, do, you don't really want to do that. There's a, lot, there's a lot of missing terms there. It'd be really awkward. But if you understand what the remainder theorem says, it says that the remainder, if you, if you let the polynomial be p of x, that's very important, by the way. Do you define this to be p of x? This actually becomes c is negative 1, isn't it? So the remainder is just going to be p of negative 1. It turns out p of negative 1 turns out to be 6, so that's the remainder. By the way, is it a factor? Is x plus 1 a factor? No, because to be a factor, doesn't the remainder have to be 0? And that's what the factor theorem says. The factor theorem, putting it all together, if you have a 0 of a polynomial, a value of x that makes a polynomial 0, then x minus c has, has to be a factor of it. We've actually used that fact before. Anyway, so if I ask you a question, is uh, the question is, is x plus 2 a factor of this horrible polynomial? Actually, it's not that bad. Uh, the answer is, you could, you could use long division. I think we, we probably did this type of problem before. You, you use long division and see. But you could also just de define the polynomial function to be x cubed plus x squared minus 3x minus 2. Notice c becomes negative 2 because this is x minus negative 2. All you have to do to determine if x plus 2 is a factor is see if p of negative 2 is 0. So what is p of negative 2? Sure enough, you get 0. So since the remainder is 0, it's a factor. Find the value of k so that x plus 3 is a factor of this polynomial. Anyway, so define the polynomial to be x cubed minus kx minus 4. And notice, uh, is x plus 3 a factor? That means it is p of negative 3 equal to 0. That's how you would start it. So just compute p of negative 3. It has to be 0. When you plug in negative 3 and set it equal to 0, you end up with 0 equals negative 27 plus 3k minus 4. So when you solve this for k, you get k equals 31 over 3. If k equals 31 over 3, this will be a factor. Amazing. Let's see, one last thing I want to talk about. It's not that important, but it might be important if in other classes. It depends on who your teacher is. Let me, let me talk about synthetic division for a little bit. It's just a short way to write it. The only, only thing about synthetic division it only is valid. You can only use it when you have a linear divisor, okay? That's why I don't really cover it that much, because uh, it's only useful when you have a linear divisor. Instead of going through this long process, you get, um, by the way, if, if you want to check me on my long division, it's right here. When you divide it, I get 2x squared minus 4x plus 4 with a remainder of negative 5. The synthetic division is just a nice schema to, to perform the same process. When you have a linear factor of x plus 2, you put the 0 out here. Okay, so if it's x plus 2, it becomes a negative 2. Here you put the, the co coefficients. The coefficient of x cubed is 2. Notice the coefficient of x squared is 0. The coefficient of x is negative 4 and 3. And then the way it works is you bring down this, this first coefficient and you multiply. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then you add. You add the, this next column. When you add, you get negative 4. We multiply again. You, 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 you um, you can continue the process. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. And then you add, you get 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And you add, you get negative 5. Now, the way you interpret your results is, it's kind of nice. This last number here is going to be the remainder. And these, it turns out, are the coefficient of the quotient. You see how the quotient is 2x squared minus 4x plus 4? These will be the coefficients of the quotient. Anyway, see if you can do this one. Go ahead, hit the pause button. Okay, this is how it works. You bring down the 1. You multiply by uh, this, and you get negative 2. You, you add these together, you get uh, negative 1. You multiply, you get 2. You add these together, you get negative 1. You multiply, you get 2. You add, you get 0. Since remainder is 0, the answer is yes. The answer here is, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.